Thank you all for joining us today for this Medicare webinar series and today's topic, Medicare Part D, presented by the Pikes Peak Area Agency on Aging. We want to thank the Pikes Peak Library District for its support of this webinar series. Before we begin, we ask that you please mute your microphones until we reach the question and answer portions of the presentation. You can also use the raise hand function in the Teams toolbar at the top or at the bottom of your screen or the chat area to let us know if you have a question. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Barbara Sigmund of the Pikes Peak Area Agency on Aging. Barbara, it's all yours. Thank you, Jared. Welcome everyone. As he said, this is gonna be Medicare Part D, where it's pretty short, so we're gonna have plenty of time. If you have questions, please just put them in the chat and I'll stop periodically and we'll get them all answered for you. It's a small group, so if you have questions, let's hear them. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Our mission here at the Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments and the Pikes Peak Area Agency on Aging is to help older Americans remain in their home by removing those barriers for independent living. We have advocates and leadership that is set up to help those folks and, and to keep them in their homes. And that is right now we are El Paso Park and Teller counties and the ship plan the ship organization though has more more counties if you've heard that before but the pikes peak area council of government basically covers el paso park and teller counties next slide i work for the ship program which is the state health insurance assistance program we counsel medicare beneficiaries with free and unbiased in-depth one-on-one assistance for all things medicare we cover nine counties, El Paso Park, Taylor, Lake, Custer, Co Chafee, Fremont, Humana, Humana, Warfano, and Los Animas. You'll see that we have our Colorado Springs numbers there. You can jot those down if you need to. We'll take just a second or two. Next slide, please. The Administration for Community Living is the administrator for the SHIP program. And they are periodically, and, and right now this has been an ongoing, uh, they make calls to find out your satisfaction with the SHIP program. Did you have a one-on-one? -on -one? So we're required to enter those into the computer is how they get your information. The surveys are used to provide funding. And since all of our services are free, we can use all of the funding that we need. As as it's been said in the news, and we've heard it over and over, the population for this age group has increased tremendously, but the funding has been lagging sorely behind, as in with most programs. Next slide. So just a quick review of what we've covered so far in this series. We talked about Medicare Part A, which is your hospitalization. We talked about how you get it, how much it costs, and what does it cover. We did Medicare Part B. And once again, how much does it cost, what does it cover, and how do you get it? Those are your original Medicare benefits. Next slide, please. And last week, we talked about Medigap plans or Medicare supplements and Medicare Advantage plans. How do you enroll in one? What does it cover? What does it cost? And when can you enroll in it? That's very, very important. Next slide. So as we've said over and over a couple of times here, tonight is Medicare Part D. That is your prescription drug coverage for Medicare. Next slide. This is the prescription drug benefit. So it's for outpatient drugs only. So those, the doctor gives you a slip of paper that's got a prescription on it. You take it to the pharmacy, you get your medication. This benefit went into effect in 2006. Before that, there was no outpatient coverage at all for drugs, and it was all out of pocket. The plans that, that they've come up with all have formularies. All the insurance companies pretty much have formularies. And that's basically just a list of drugs that they're going to cover. Uh, Medicare requires that they include a range of drugs in each category. 
You're going to pay a monthly premium if you get a standalone Part D plan. Sometimes you pay it with an Advantage plan. It just depends on whether or not there's a premium for, for the plan. There's typically going to be deductibles and co-payments unless you have extra help. And that would be to pay the cost for people who are low income and low resources. Next slide. It's it, so many people come in with the question of should I enroll in Part D? I, I don't take any drugs. Well, Part D, like everything in Medicare, is optional. If you don't want to take Part A or B or D, that's entirely up to you. But what you need to know is that you must have credible coverage. For example, if you have an employer plan or you're on the VA, you have VA benefits, then you don't have a penalty. You can keep going on that as long as you're eligible for the employer plan. And but there are some questions that you do need to ask yourself. Is that coverage going to continue when you retire? If it is not, you might want to start thinking about a Part D plan. Your current cost right now for your drugs is something that you want to compare. You want to compare, I'm working, so my drugs cost this amount. And what if I go on to a Part D, how much is it going to cost there? Which is the better deal? Also, you want to look at premiums. You're not paying anything for your insurance at work or even a small amount. Look at what the Part D premium is going to be after you add all the other costs of Medicare. Is that worth it? If you do not have credible coverage, meaning you're not working, you don't have VA or one of the other military, then a later enrollment is going to mean that you pay a penalty. Next slide, please. The enrollment periods are the same as they are for your Part B. Typically, a 65-year-old in their initial enrollment period would have three months before the month of and three months after their birthday, their 65th birthday. We also have an annual election period, which is October 15th through December 7th. You will hear that call, called open enrollment and you will know it's here by the advertising. All of the coverage that you select during that time begins on January 1. In some situations, like you lose your job, get a divorce, those kinds of things, you may be allowed for to get a special enrollment period and then you, would, you wouldn't have to wait until the next open enrollment. Next slide. Part D penalty. If you're waiting to enroll, it could mean a penalty. And, and that's if you don't have credible coverage. The penalty for a Part D plan works a little bit different than the one for the, the Part B. If you remember, uh, the Part B is 10% per year for every year you don't have credible coverage. The Part D penalty is 1% premium increase for every month that you did not enroll and you, and you did not have credible coverage. So the, the, the national average benchmark plan right now is $32.74 a month. That's for 2023. So, if you didn't enroll for 12 months, you would have a 12% penalty. That's 12% times 32.74, two years, 24, 36, and so on. These penalties, like all Medicare penalties, will be there forever. If you have extra help, they usually will not charge you for the, any of the penalties. They'll take that off. Next slide. Medicare Part D, just like B, is income and assets tested. So you can see by the chart here, if you make less than $97,000, you won't have a penalty. It'll be whatever the plan premium is. But if you have $97,000 up to $123,000, then you will have a penalty. And you can see over to the far right, $12.20. 
uh, Social Security determines what these are going to be. I don't know the exact formula. Next slide. Where, let's stop here for just a minute and let's talk about whether you have any questions. Do we need to go back over something? Dave, you want to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question? Yes. So, Barbara, uh, I'm 64, uh, in great health, D don't take any drugs. If I wait and don't sign up for Part D initially, but when I'm 75, I want to sign up to Part D, will I then be still be paying a penalty? Yes. If you do not have credible coverage from from 64 to 75, for once you turn 65 to 75, if you don't have credible coverage, have a job, go through the VA, have Tricare, something like that, then yes, you are going to pay a penalty for signing up then instead of when you were eligible. Okay, so even though I I will have accessed Part A and B at 65. I still have a penalty for Part D because I didn't sign up at my first opportunity. That's correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Barbara, I'm not seeing any other hands raised and I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. Okay, well, let's go on then. Next slide. So let's talk a little bit about how the plans work. It's four phases. The first phase is the deductible phase. During that time, you're going to pay 100% of the cost of your drugs up to $505. When you've met that deductible, you go into the in initial coverage. Typically, the drugs, they, the plans can charge you up to 25% of the cost of the drug, but usually they don't. Not when it's a generic tier one drug. Sometimes you'll get it for zero, but maybe just a few dollars, but they can charge you 25%. That's the maximum. The initial coverage, that is when you have, have paid up to $4,660, that's the cost of, that you paid and the cost that the insurance paid, then you go into what is called the coverage gap or may have been explained to you as the donut hole. Even though you might have been getting those drugs for a lesser cost before, what you're going to be paying now is 25% for generic and 25% for brand. And you will pay the 25%. That's what the donut hole or the coverage gap is. So when you reach a total of $5,865, and that is the $4,660 that you had originally, and then the 25% that you paid. When that gap totals, all of the, all of the cost for your drugs totals $11,206, you go into the catastrophic phase. That phase, you will pay 5% coinsurance of the cost of the drug. Sorry about that. Or $4.15 and $10.35 for a brand on uh, or on non-preferred generics. The plan pays 15%, Medicare pays 80%, and then your 5%. Next slide, please. Medicare requires that all Part D plans cover at least two medications in every class. So there may be 20 different kinds of blood pressure medicine out there. They have to offer two, but it can be any two. So that's where your formulary comes into to play there. They may, they may or may not have the two that you need. That's why you have to look at all, go through all of the plans. The classes that, <clears throat> excuse me, that they have to cover, and they have to cover whatever is on the market, are 
drugs for antidepressant, antipsychotic, anticonvulsants, anti retroviral, excuse me, I'm stumbling over my own tongue here, immunosuppressants, and tenioplastics. Next slide. You have to have a prescription. It has to be approved by the US FDA. And it has to be used for the approved medical reason. Right now, there's a lot of to do on TV about the diabetic drugs that she helps you lose weight or Viagra that helps lower your blood pressure. But the doctor has to write it for the reason that it was initially put on the market. So if you need a blood pressure medicine, then he needs to write it for a blood pressure medicine, not Viagra. They must cover drugs, biologicals, and insulin. They have to cover the medical supplies for injecting insulin. That's the syringe, the needles, the alcohol swabs. Brand names and generics have to be on the formulary. Next slide. What does it not cover? It doesn't cover drugs that are under Part A or B. So if you were in the hospital and you were received medication, it doesn't cover that. If you have an injection or a chemotherapy or dialysis that's part of your Part B, it would not be covered. Over-the-counter drugs are not covered. Drugs specifically to treat anorexia, fertility, and cosmetic purposes are not covered. Neither is cough and cold medicine. So the guafenicin, the rubitus, and the mucinex, they're not covered. Even if you have a prescription for it, they still won't cover it. Vitamins and minerals, those kinds of supplements, there are exceptions. Uh, the ones that are used for particular kinds of conditions. Next slide. Lots of information there. Any questions? Seeing anything, Jared? I'm not. If anyone wants to raise their hand or put something in the chat. And I'm kind of stalling for time. I'm not seeing anyone doing either one. So I think we yeah. can continue. Me too. Uh, but I told you this was short. So it's not It's not going to be a very long presentation. So if you have low income or just not enough income, you can apply through the Social Security Administration for extra help. If you're already on uh, SSI or Medicaid or a Medicare Savings Program, you will automatically get that extra help. There are several levels. It depends on what your income and assets are. So they may pay um, 50%, 75%. It just depends on, on what you make. The way you enroll in that is to go to ssa.gov, and there will be a block on there that says get help paying for drugs. You can call them up at 800-772-1213 or you can come down and see us at the SHIP office or the SHIP office that's in your county. Each state, every county in the state has a SHIP office. You may can only access it by phone, but they have one. Next slide. So these are the extra help guidelines. A single person making 1,843 or a couple making 2,485. The maximum total assets for a single person, 16,660 or a couple at 33,240. This does not include your house. It doesn't include your primary vehicle, but extra vehicles now will be counted as an asset. It doesn't count your furniture, your jewelry, or anything like that. It does count what is in your checking account, your savings account, CDs, IRA, stocks, bonds, 
any kind of money that you can put your hands on right away, it will count. These numbers are based on a $20 disregard, but these are the numbers that you would use just to determine if you are close and if you are, go ahead and apply. If you are not, if you make way over, then very likely you're not gonna be accepted. Everyone is still able to apply, but that doesn't mean that everyone's gonna get approved. Next slide. There are patient assistance programs out there that allow those that are making higher incomes to get a help paying for the drugs. These, this help normally comes directly from the manufacturer. The application is based on a tax return. It, it may only help you in the donut hole period. Depends on the plan. Take a look because they have all different requirements, all different eligibility levels. They usually have lower or no copays. And we've given you a list of places that you can go to look for those companies. If you want to leave it there for just a minute, Jared, and let them write down if they have if they have some questions about the different help that's out there. Okay, we can move on to the next slide. So how do you find the best part D? I get this question over and over and over in my office. There's so many plans out there. How do I decide? Well, you're going to look at the premium. That makes sense for the kind of coverage that you need. Look at the coverages. Is it going to cover? Do you have um, perhaps things in your in your history, your family history that you might want to keep in mind? The cost at the pharmacy, the co-pays, the co-insurance, the deductibles, and it, the pharmacy does make a difference because the insurance companies and the pharmacies make, make deals. So sometimes you will get a better deal by going with a different pharmacy. You can call each plan up, but that might take a while. You can contact an agent, but you need to be aware that an agent can only sell you the insurance that the through the company that hired them. Brokers will have lots of different options for you. Or you can use the Medicare plan finder and always, always, always you can call us or you can come help uh, make an appointment and come into the office and we will help you. Next slide. The Medicare plan finder. This is usually your most effective way to find a good plan, one that meets your needs. You can set it up to make yourself a make yourself an account, put in your um, information, set yourself up a a password and a username. And you'll be able to see all of the things that affect your account. You'll be able to look at your Medicare summary notices. That's a, that's the services that you've you've had in the last last three months. And you can look at those in real time. Right now, you're getting those summary notices only every three months. So you may forget all about the questions that you had three months ago when you saw the doctor and how you were being charged. So it's a good idea to set up an account. But what I think is the most important thing there is the fact that you can see what drugs you put in last time. Because if you have an account, it will keep those drugs listed for you and you don't have to put them in again. But you certainly are allowed to just put it in by zip code and take a look just to get some estimates. You do not have to set up an account. But beware, if you have a whole list of drugs, you're going to have to put those in every time you go back into the to the uh, Medicare.gov. I don't know if or not. Um, if you're going to make an account, yes, yes, Karen, you will have to have your Medicare card. It will give you the information then about your account whether or not you qualify for extra help. 
it's there. If you're already enrolled in a plan, you can see that. But yes, you will have to have your Medicare card along with your other information that you probably already know, and your name, your birthday, those kinds of things. Anybody else have a question? Okay, well, let's go to the next slide. So here is a copy of the homepage. Very good. So you can see that circled is to find health and drug plans. That will help you get your find your Part D. Next slide. You can log in if you have an account or you can set up an account. And as I said, you can put in your zip code and select the kind of plan that you're looking for, whether it be a Part D or an Advantage plan. Next slide. Other resources, Medicare.gov. 1-800-MEDICARE, DORA, your Part D prescription drug plans can help you, different, sheet, different Google Sheets, and of course, you can always call us at the office or make an appointment and come in and we can help you with that. Next, next slide, please. Oh, the dreaded scammers. Medicare covers the COVID-19 vaccine at no cost to you. If anyone asks you to share your Medicare number or tells you they're going to pay for the vaccine, you better bet it's a scam. They're really, they really don't care about your COVID vaccine. They just want to get your Medicare number. That's a very valuable piece of information for scammers. If you do feel like you've been scammed, um, you can always call the Senior Medicare Patrol or the SMP hotline, you can see the number there at 800-503-5190 or go to smpresource.org. And also we are the SMP for Colorado Springs, El Paso County, and any other county. Basically, we could take your information too if you wanted to call us. Next slide. So. Contact information or El Paso Park, Teller, Fremont, Custer Lake, Warfano, Los Animas, and Chafee Counties, 719-635-4891. And this is a toll-free number, 888-696-7213. You can also go um, online for senior insurance, well, senior I-N-S-U-R, at ppacg.org. Next slide. Okay, last chance for questions. Well, I shouldn't say last chance. You can always email me or you can email Roma and ask your question, or you can call us up on the phone. There's the numbers once again. Make an appointment and we'll, we'll help you. Any questions, comments, anything at all? Okay, well, I'm gonna bring this to a close then. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Barbara, and thank you all for taking the time today for joining us for this Medicare webinar series. We hope this information was helpful for you. This is the third session of our four-part series, and it will be available for on-demand viewing tomorrow afternoon. Next week's topic is Medicare, Medicaid, and other health insurance options, what you need to know. You'll receive a survey after this webinar is complete, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback on your thoughts on this webinar and how it can be improved. Thank you again thank you again for attending and please have a great day